Now we're still busy with the 20th century music and we know that they experience with a lot of new materials and new songs. And let's look today at what else they tried apart from Impressionism, Serialism, Pointillism, Jazz, Atonal Music, Expressionism. Now let's see what else we can expect from the 20th century. Many composers have searched for new materials to incorporate into their music, often looking to the East for inspiration. So that is now Asia, China, Japan, Indonesia. We know that even with the Impressionism that Debussy looked at gamelan music. So he was inspired by gamelan music. For instance, the French composer Olivier Messiaen has made use of Hindu rhythms and metric patterns from classical Greek poetry. He divorces these, however, from the original backgrounds and associations and uses them for his own purposes. Messian has also shown a fascination with the song of birds, so he also looked to nature. He was also influenced by nature. Both those of his own country and those of more exotic places in the world. So we know that the word exotic is a word that we use with 20th century exploring, discovering, experimentation. That is the word we use. He has written down these bird songs with the utmost precision as to rhythm and pitch and has made them the basis for many of his compositions such as the awakening of the birds for piano and orchestra, so it's like a concerto. Um, Uzwa is a bird, exotic, you see the word exotic there, for piano and small orchestra, and catalogue, catalogue de Zon, 13 pieces for piano based on the bird songs of France. So if it's a French composer, he composed for orchestra and piano, and he incorporated the sound of birds. Now the American John Cage has also shown interest in both the music and the um, philosophies of the East. His sonatas and interludes for prepared piano portray the traditional permanent emotions of India, such as sorrow, mirth, fear and anger. If I say prepared piano, we're going to see the explanation there. Cage creates new sounds by preparing the piano with nuts and bolts and screws, pieces of rubber and plastic, and it's fixed under or over and between certain strings in the piano, thus affecting both the timbre, the tone color and the pitch of those notes, producing richly varied sonorities which suggest the sounds of eastern bells, gongs and drums. So we, we have a experience now with Eastern sounds like Japanese and Chinese. You know how important the drums and the gongs. We looked at gamelan, the brass instruments, how important that was. Several composers have made similar experiments in producing new sonorities. In his Trinity to the victims of Hiroshima, the Polish composer Penderecki sometimes asks the string players to bow between the bridge and the tailpiece, or on the tailpiece itself, or to strike the soundboard with the heel of the bow. So I play my instrument in new ways, experimenting. Now Hiroshima was very important in um, the history, and that was one of the cities that the Americans bombed during the Second World War. In choral works such as the St. Luke Passion, Passion is a word we know from the Baroque era. Um, it is close to Easter. It's about the crucifixion of Christ. Now, Penerecki includes, beside normal singing, muttering, speaking, whispering, shouting, hissing, and whistling. So we see how he uses um, the voice to get his emotions. 
Like several other 20th century composers, Penderecki has made use in his music of note clusters and microtones. So very small, intervals smaller than a semitone. We saw that in music from the Arab world, for instance. Tone clusters, note clusters, a lot of thick notes together, thick texture. An entirely new range of sounds, limitless in extent, are to be found in the exploration of musique concrete and electronic music. So here we just looked at how they experimented with the sounds and the textures. Now what's very interesting about that composer John Cage is we're going to also look at a composition 4 minutes and 22 seconds where there's no music happening. But we'll come to that later. Now music concrete. <clears throat> In the late 1940s, the French composer Pierre Schaeffer began experiments in the studio design of French radio in what he called music concrete. Music composed in a concrete way directly onto magnetic tape rather than in an abstract way by writing notes down on paper. So he didn't use a program, he didn't use the, the um, uh, music paper, he just composed it and he uh, in a concrete way, he recorded it straight onto magnetic tape. The sounds he recorded were natural sounds, such as a door slamming, a cork popping from a bottle, and so on. So, sounds that you will hear in a horror or a thriller, making you quite scared, is the sounds that he recorded. He transferred these recordings to another tape, blending them superimposing them one on the other and modifying them in various ways. Now that's a technique that we use a lot nowadays of copying and pasting and deleting something here and adding something. Um, they were not used to that. They were not used to magnetic tape. So this is something completely experimental. The pitch of a sound might be changed by altering the speed of the tape. So going slower or faster. And of course, if you have um, someone speaking on a tape and it goes slower, the voice will be lower. And if I play the tape faster, the voice will go quite high. Okay. And it says there, a faster speed giving a higher pitch, a slower speed, a lower pitch. Or the original recorded sound might be played backwards. So that's quite interesting. The resulting composition was a montage of sounds stored on tape which would be played back at will without need of any performer. So now you have a tape, you're like a DJ, you can just play it back. Now we're going to listen to a recording of Musique Concrete. Can you identify any of the original sounds the composer has transformed in his composition? Identify what you hear there. So I hear domestic sounds that is recorded and copied, pasted, and maybe played one over the other. That sounds like a dog, dog barking. dog barking but I hear that sound carrying on and other things added to that yeah I 
have a new sound. Also, something industrial. So it's quite interesting what I hear in this composition. Now we will also hear his experience with Musée Concrete. After that, I came home from school one day and turned on the radio in my room and heard something coming out of the radio that sounded like the kind of things that I had been concocting on this tape recorder, which were collages of sounds, naturally recorded sounds, put in different orders. And my first thought was, how did they get hold of my tapes? And my second thought was, they didn't. This is somebody else's work. So I turned on my tape recorder and started recording off the radio, whatever this was, and listened very attentively to, who is this? What is this? And the announcer came on at the end and said, this was the first panorama of musique concrète by two French composers. And I turned the tape recorder off and just sat back thinking, what does this mean? Because up to that point, I thought whatever I was doing was just my 11, 12 year old equivalent of building model airplanes or something. Now, something that to me sounded very similar was being broadcast over the radio and it was from a record and the record was from France. So suddenly I had this realization that the world is much bigger than I thought it was as regarding this, whatever this technology was. And so I began to dig into what is music concrete and uh, you know, what, what can you understand of this at the age of 12 or 13? But, you know, I, I tried to understand it and became a big fan of these two composers, Pierre Schaeffer and Pierre Henri. Uh, I think Pierre Henri is still alive as we speak because they were in their early 20s in the early 50s. Schaefer, I think, is, is passed on. So this is now Pierre Schaefer. So let's listen to what we hear there. So I hear the sound of piano. I hear something like the organ there. I hear that white noise. It sounds like a prepared piano there. So this of course was not written down. This is music concrete, so it's already concrete. It's recorded on the tape, so we don't find notes written out for this. Sounds very industrial. It sounds like industrial noise, domestic noise. the timbre, the whooshing sounds that we have there. So this is not music that you will go and pay a ticket for and go to a concert hall. This is now really experimenting with new equipment. So let's read your assignment for this week. Listen to a, rec a record of Ms. Musique Concrete. Can you identify any of the original sounds the composer has transformed in his compositions? So you must write the name of the composition and describe that.